Hi you guys, today we're gonna to talk about solving a system by graphing, all right? So this is gonna be a linear system and we're gonna solve it by graphing. And I try to photocopy because I know you guys want me to write on my notes and the graph just is too light. So um, I'm gonna use a piece of graph paper as well. Okay, so here is just to give you the basics of, of what the heck we're talking about. A system is when we have two lines. So here is one line. And here is another line. We have two lines that intersect. They don't always intersect, but that's the gist of it. And we wanna find out where they intersect. So these two lines intersect right here. And so the solution to our system would be negative two, negative one. So we're looking at where the two lines intersect. That's the point that we care about, okay? So that's kind of the gist of it. And I'm gonna go through with you how we do that. Like I said, I just have my graph paper here because it's really difficult for you to see um, for you to see my lines. So that's why I'm gonna do this here. All right, so it says solve the system by graphing. And so here's the system, it's two lines, one line, two line. They're both in slope intercept form. That's awesome. Uh, it says graph, e here are the steps on how to do this. We're gonna graph each line on the same coordinate plane. So we're gonna graph both lines on this plane and then the solution is where the two lines intersect. And our answer is gonna look like an ordered pair. And our answer is gonna look like a coordinate. Ordered pair is another name for coordinate. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna just use this graph paper. Why don't we put it on this side? Okay. All right, so let's graph the first line. It says that the y-intercept is negative four. So I go one, two, three, four, down to negative four, and my slope is negative two. So I'm gonna put negative two over one. I always like to go right for my first move. So I go down two, right one. And now that I know my line can keep going down now, I can back it up and I know where it's gonna go this way. Up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. Okay, my second line. The y-intercept is six. And my slope is one half. So rise one, run two. Now I know I, I'm not only running out of room here, they're not gonna intersect on this side. So this side is the side I really wanna go on. And so sometimes people will ask me, well, do I have to keep going? How long does the line have to be? I wanna go until they intersect because that's the point I care about. So it doesn't make sense for me to keep going down here or keep going over here. I just wanna go until they intersect somewhere, okay? So the answer is the point at which they intersect. So the solution to this system is negative four, four. Okay, so that's it. You graph a line, you graph a line, you see where they intersect. Okay, this next problem, it is slope intercept form, so it's pretty good. If you wanna freeze the video, you might want to because it's um, you know, pretty quick and you guys might know how to do it or I'll try to do it quickly so it doesn't make it too long. Okay, we're gonna graph both of these. Let's start off with this one. This is the y-intercept, so I go to negative two. This is the slope, rise over run. I rise one, I run two, rise one, run two, rise one, run two. And then I know it's gonna go over here, down one, back two. Okay, now let's graph the other one. My y-intercept is negative seven. Two, three, four, five, six. Down here, and my slope is three over one. So I rise three, run one. Rise three, run one. Now, what part do I care about? The part at which they intersect. So I, my, my solution is two, negative one. All right, let's practice another one over here. Okay, so once again, slope intercept form. Oh, I'm being too nice to you guys. Okay, so slope intercept form. But I noticed this y-intercept is 10, so that's what happened last time. I did not have enough room, so I'm gonna make sure I have enough room up high. Okay, so my y-intercept is 10. Okay, 
and my slope is two over one. So rise to run one. Let's hope it's down here somewhere. For the second line, my y-intercept is one. My slope is negative one-fourth, down one over four. Okay, so I don't really need to keep going down here because they're not gonna intersect. This is the way I need to go. And my solution is the point at which they intersect. Four, two. Okay, all right, now what can also happen is, I have another example here that I wanted to share with you. So let's just do one at a time. Um, since this graph paper is so light still, I'm gonna graph it over here. Okay, solve, solve the system by graphing. Now, if you notice, this is not in slope intercept form. So I have two options. I can either, this is in standard form, so I can find the X and the Y intercepts. If they're decent, like a nice pretty point, then I can plot those and connect the line, or I can turn it into slope intercept form. And this one is very close to slope intercept form. So let's do it with the bottom one. So slope intercept form is Y equals MX plus B. Well, here's my MX. So I can just rewrite this and say it's the same thing as y equals negative 3x plus 5, right? That negative is with the 3, so I have to keep it with the 3 here. So we're going to graph that line. And then what I can do for this line, since it's in standard form, is I can find the x-intercept and find the y-intercept, or which that does not look pretty because... If I do 25 divided by 15, I don't get a nice pretty number. Or I can just put this in slope intercept form. So let's try to do that. Um, I am going to subtract 15x here. I'm going to do my work up here so you can follow along what I'm doing. So here I'm just rewriting it. 15x plus 5y equals 25. I want to put this so that it's in y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to subtract my 15x from both sides. So I get 5y equals negative 15x plus 25. And I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And now I'm going to graph this line. Well, right now you might notice something. Um, and I'm going to show you, because you might not catch it right away, what do you notice about these two lines? They're the same thing. So let us let me show you what that's going to look like. Okay, if I went to graph this, and let's pretend I didn't, sorry. Let's pretend I didn't, like, do both equations. I, I started off, and I did that, and then I graphed it. Okay, so the y-intercept is 5. One, two, three, four. And the slope is 3. Negative 3, 1 and I draw my line. Okay, then I do the other work for the other problem, and I get this equation right here. And let's just say I'm in zoning out and I start graphing. And I'm gonna notice, wait a second, these lines are on top of each other. They're the same line. So remember, the part I care about is where they intersect. Well, these lines now are intersecting everywhere because they're on top of each other. So your answer for this would be uh, infinite, infinitely many solutions. It means they intersect everywhere. I'm not sure I spelled infinitely right. They, inter they intersect everywhere, okay? Now let's look at the next one. All right, once again, I have two equations. Let's graph the first one, because this, well, this is almost in slope-intercept form. Uh, pretty easy to get it back around. What I have to do, let me write the work here, y minus 2x plus 6. Remember, I want it to be y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. y equals 2x plus 6. Okay, now that is in slope-intercept form. My y-intercept is 6, and my slope is 2. Okay. 
All right, let's look at the next equation. Well, this is in standard form, so I could fill in zeros for both of these, and, and I'll show you how to do that. You could also convert it into slope-intercept form like what we were doing, but if I wanted to plot this, like plot the y-intercept and plot the x-intercept, I could do that as well, and sometimes from standard form, that's pretty easy. So if I plug a zero in for this x, that's gonna cancel out, and I'm gonna get two y equals eight. Divide both sides by two, and y equals four. So that means the y-intercept is four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now if I plug a zero in for y, I can find the x-intercept. I have negative four x equals eight. Divide both sides by negative four, x equals negative two. The x-intercept is negative two, and then I can connect. Well, what do you notice about these lines? They're parallel. They're never going to intersect. So for this answer, there's no solution. They're not going to intersect anywhere. All right. So the next part I wanted to just show you guys really quickly is basically when you have a system, whoops, when you have a system, you're either going to have one solution because they intersect somewhere. The lines could be parallel and you're going to have no solution or it's the same line on top of each other and that it's, you're gonna have infinitely many solutions. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Either one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. You'll never have two answers if they're linear functions, which is what we're doing right now. So these should all be linear functions. All right, tonight, your homework is to practice doing that. And we will talk tomorrow. Have a good day.